Hi friends, this is Chris with Josephine's Design. I am so sorry. My daughter is leaving and I had to catch her because it was very important and I wasn't sure she would read uh, her text. So please forgive me. And um, she's getting ready to go on a trip or a day trip with all of her friends. And um, anyways, so there are things that had to be done before she leaves and I forgot, excuse me. And it was very important. We are um, you know, we want to make sure she's safe and, you know, all that good stuff because they're going up into the hill country. So we're just like, oh, hold on. And she's not driving. Somebody else is driving. So, okay. Has there been a trial in your past while not pure joy at the time, at that time tasted and strengthened your faith? Can you now see the joy in that trial? Yes. Yes. Um, the way I grew up was not fun. It was miserably painful. <laughs> yes, miserably painful. Um, I don't know how else to say it. It was something that, um, when I look back now and I think, how did I make it through that? I made it through by the grace of God. Um, it, it would have driven some kids today. It would have driven them to very bad things. I know that. Um, because I was a believer and I had this incredible Christian friend that I will never forget my sophomore year. We went to high school sophomore year. We didn't go freshman. And I remember her asking, um, I was a believer at asked Jesus in my heart at 10, but I was wavering. I was becoming more of a foxhole Christian because I finally had freedom. I could drive a car. I could be out on my own. I was just like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I get a break from all of this. And it was the struggles at home. And I remember my friend said, my parents are going out of town. Could I come spend the night with you? We went to the same church. So I saw our youth group every week and Sunday school and all those things, choir. Um, but, and she was also in the band and I was in band in high school and um, very much into music. And she, um, I remember her asking me, if you died tonight, would you know where you go? And she was spending the night with me. And I mean, she was beautifully flawed. I mean, she wasn't, I'm going to move you guys for a second. She wasn't um, like the hippest kid in school. She wasn't the most beautiful kid in school. But as time went on, I began to see how beautiful she was. She was more beautiful. More beautiful. And she was dealing with her own issues that I didn't understand. And she didn't even understand herself. She could see mine. I, you know how that is. Yeah. So, um, but she struggled seeing hers. And, but all I can say is, is that, um, to God be the glory, you know, we go through things and we learn from them. Hopefully we learn from them and then we can either share it or we can keep it to ourselves. I was just talking with my daughter this morning that God, I've been praying, God, what are my next steps? Things are closing. What do I do next? What are we doing now? You know? Grands don't need us. There's, you know, there's all these things that are going on. What, what's the next step? And so God started laying a couple of things out in my heart. And one of them was, I had a client call who has um, a family member with Alzheimer's and it is severe. I mean, he's in the very difficult days and he's the sole caregiver and he's had his own health issues but, and I get it. <laughs> I get it. Having health issues and having to take care of someone. Um, and be the response, the person that's responsible. And, um, you know, with my mom, my dad, I would tell him you're the captain of the ship and I'm here to swab your deck. But in reality that became flipped at a certain point. And so I didn't just have her to take care of. I had him to take care of as well. His health began and his, he lived 20 years beyond what the doctors had predicted. So, and I think it was his sheer will to be alive, to provide for my mom. And to provide for us kids if we needed anything. And I think in all of this that um, God showed me, because I began in the exhaustion of this particular season at work, um, I was trying to write him because we'd had a phone conversation, a long couple of conversations. And so um, very bright man, very smart, very talented Um and he's had, to re he's had to retire because he has to attend to this family member. And so I started writing up. We had discussed a certain thing. He goes, well, I just don't really know how to go about that, Chris. And I said, well, here's what I would suggest. And 
and this is what I did. And, um, and I, we did both routes, you know, as X, Y, Z, we did both sides of the coin. We did it all. And I said, but here is what I found to be um, more instrumental. And then, you know, I know it's going to be expensive and, you know, here's some possible ways that you can see if you can get funding, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so I started writing this long text and I realized you're calling me God. This isn't the first text every year because our clients are aging. I get one of these kind of, can you tell me what are the most important things kind of conversations? How should we prepare, et cetera. And, um, and we talked to two very sick clients this year and, um, or I did. And anyways, I realized, you know, what I wish I would have known, what I wish I would have known as my parents age. And so I'm praying through, it's not going to happen this weekend. It's not going to happen next weekend. Weekend after that, um, my husband and my daughter would begin Saturdays working on the mini house. And I think I will begin a new blog. Um, it's not for everybody here. This may not apply to you at all. Um, but it is um, the thoughts and process that I went through, the things I learned, whether it be 100% right or wrong, these are the things I learned. Um, I am not an expert on anything, but I can tell you what I experienced, what I learned. And in a way, I was telling my daughter about it. We were talking this morning and I said, in a way, you know, I never got the opportunity to grieve. I never got to go to grief counseling. Um, I never got to do these things. And I, and I told her, I said, I'm, I tend to be a writer anyways, because I was journaling through the whole thing. And um, I, I stopped journaling after they passed. And that was a huge mistake. I tried to journal. I tried to journal. But I think I was just so emotionally fragile for so long. I had to hold it together for everyone that I couldn't afford to let go and be sad and afford to mourn and afford, you know, any of that. And matter of fact, my husband and I, in the midst of, you know, working on the estate stuff, he said, um, last day of, uh, almost last day before in the you know, day before the end of tax season. And he brought up something about my mom. And I said, that makes me so sad. And I was trying not to cry. I didn't want him to know I was crying. We were talking on the phone. He was in the office here on the property. And I, I just, I didn't want him to know I was crying. And I realized that's what I did the whole way through. That if I began to tear up, I'd suck it up, suck it up, cupcake. You know, that's my, my joke. Suck it up, cupcake. Well, the problem is you suck it up too long, you bury it. And there were gems in that journey. There were gems. There were precious moments, things I'll never forget. Never, and, and one of them I don't even know if I can share because it might hurt somebody else, um, that were just incredible, incredible blessings. And, and it's my journey, you know, it's my journey. And I don't, I don't want anyone to feel like that they have to do what I did, but these are the lessons that God taught me. So as we look at why is it important to have these trials, why is it important to have these um, issues. Why do we have to persevere? Because God is not only teaching us, he may be teaching others in our journey. So I'm going to read that scripture again. I'm going to read it from the Amplified. It will have um, commentary within the, the, the scripture. I always like to preface that. And, and then there's commentary below. And I want to kind of go through that commentary as well, because it's so good. Okay. So we are James 1, 2 through 3. Consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you fall into various trials. Be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. That's so true. So if we go down here and what they're referring to trials in verse two is these are outward circumstances, conflicts, sufferings, and troubles encountered by all believers. Trials are not pleasant and may be extremely grievous. Maybe grievous. But believers are to consider them as opportunities for rejoicing. Oh, that night when I was so waiting that 30 minutes before I answered the prayer, um, the night before all the taxes were due, at one point I thought, Lord, what do I need to do? Because if not, I'm going to go crazy. Um, and I knew this. I knew it was such a huge, huge 
huge thing. And I began praying and asking him. And I realized I just needed to walk. So I walked my house because I wasn't going to walk out in the dark at night because I, you know, if I trip and fall, it would, it would hurt. And so, and it was middle of the night, you know, and I was, I just began to walk, walk and pray, walk and pray. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I know you have an answer, Lord, whatever it be, help my heart accept it. Lord, just show me your way. Show me your way. You will provide. You've already provided. I can, I can work it this way. You've given me the wisdom to work, to do what I have to do on this end. What do we need to do? Lord Jesus, show me. What do I need to do? What do I need to do? And my husband came back in and it was amazing. And then, you know, he, he's like a slow leaker of information. And then there was a little bit more that came that I was like, oh, but it's still doable. It's still okay. It's still fantastic. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And by yesterday, he walked in and said, um, if you will do X, Y, Z, we can plead, you know, our case. And I said, okay. So, I mean, it's still in the Lord's hands. Who knows what the, you know, the lovely entity in this country will do with it. But um, it was a genuine, it was a genuine boo-boo. And it wasn't because of us. It was because of two other entities and their misinformation, which, I mean, I wish I had recorded that. But anyways, um, but I just trust God. I trust God. So when we go through these horrible situations, it grieves us. It makes us angry. It hurts our feelings. It makes us sad. Um, it makes us anxious. It makes us, but what do we do with that? What do we do with that? So I had paced and prayed. I, and I'm going to say it was pacing. That it was walking the house. I had basically walked the house. Um, and if you don't know, we're in a, 1938 farmhouse. So it's basically one shot all the way through to the end of the house. So I, I asked what I walked. I walked it. I did that after I almost died 2009. That was my walking space. And, um, and it worked for me. I mean, it's how I was able to recover almost dying. And so I thought, I'm going to walk it. I'm going to walk it. And think about that, you know, three, four weeks ago, my knee wouldn't have let me walked it. And especially at that time of night. And I would have been so physically attacked. I couldn't have even like gotten to that point of thinking it's okay, God, it's okay. It, it would get me there. Eventually I would get there. The Lord would have patience with me, but not like that, not like that. And so I'm um, just like when I used to be in pain, when I would stand up and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When I would just, you know, try to get past the pain and I would just pray and pray and pray. That's what I did. That's what I did. Help me accept your will. Help me love you, Lord. Help me to serve you, Lord. Help me to to let this be an example, Lord. Help me to learn from this, Lord. Help me help others to learn from this, Lord. And it was that. And it was that. And I pray that it will continue to be that. So trials are that. The testing of your faith. The word that is translated into this phrase occurs only here and in 1 Peter 1, 7. The term was used for coins. This is so great. That were that that were genuine and not debased. The aim of trying is not to destroy or reflect, but to purge and refine. I know it's not to destroy or afflict, but to purge and refine. When you hear about how they um how gold has many different levels, well that has to do with its purification process. And of course the most purified product is the most valuable product. It is the most beneficial product, right? So when we think of that, we are being refined. We are being refined through these things. Patience here transcends the idea of hearing uh, of bearing affliction. Patience here transcends the idea of bearing affliction. It includes the idea of standing fast under pressure and staying and with a staying power that turns adversities into opportunities. Again, it turns adversities into opportunities. So forgive me. I see the eye doctor next week, next Friday, um, a week from this Friday, and I will get new glasses, God willing, the following week. So hopefully I'll be able to see better for you guys. I apologize. But um, you got to want it when you can't see this well, guys. You got to want it. I want it. I want it. I want God's word. I want him to teach me. Um, so um, I am here to tell you that count it all joy. Count it all joy. And I am a person 
that has watched, held the hands of loved ones when they died. I have, um, three times <laughs> I have, um, I've lost two children, um, two babies. I have, um, I've just gone through some rough stuff. But if that had not happened in my life, I would not know the joy of, of, of God's word, of God's experience in my life, of God's guidance, of God's wisdom. It's okay to mourn. It's okay to be sad. It just can't take over every part of you. It's okay to struggle. It's okay to question. It just cannot take over every part of you. It's okay to be riding that high of joy. Um, well, I don't want to use the word joy. Riding that high of excitement. It just can't take over you because it's great to share the good news. But we, ha and, and I'm not talking about God's word, the good news in our life and being excited that something happened. But we got to be able to maintain and go through life and still love God in the valleys as well as the mountaintops. We have to know that God never leaves us in the valleys and that even when we're on that high of that mountaintop, God is there and we need to give God that glory and we need to sing his praises and we need to love him, but we need to do that in the valleys too. Does that make sense? All right, guys, I love you. I hope, I hope that this encouraged you today. Guys, that is always my prayer on these days. And I only feel comfortable sharing from my own life. Um, occasionally I'll tell you stories about other people, but I'll change the names to, you know, protect the innocents or so on and so forth. Or I'll change their um, gender or I'll change their um, um, familial title. You know, I'll speak about, you know, a family member, but I'll, it'll be about something else. You understand? Or it'll be about a friend and, you know, you know what I'm saying. So, um, but I share those things because God brings them to my heart. And I believe um, as a teacher, my husband, my husband has said this for years, you know, um, you're, it's all about you. You can't talk, you can't talk about yourself. And I'm like, no, that's a very valuable teaching tool. Um, it's an, it's an object lesson. And, and I will embarrass myself for that object lesson. Um, and if you know what an object lesson is, um, say, I, I'm going to teach you guys about uh, the difference between a real flower and a fake flower. Well, this isn't even a fake flower. It's a flower on a pouring spout. I would have something like this and I would talk about it. Then I'd have the real flower and then I would go from there. So when I share with you, I'm sharing with you either experiences in my life. And a lot of times I'll say it's my life when it's somebody else's life too, because I don't want them to be embarrassed. Um, but I will tell you that God can teach us. And if you remember what Paul said, Paul said, if you don't know what to do as a Christian, you know, then at least look at me. You know, if you're not going to look at Jesus, you can look at me. You follow me. Let's serve Jesus together. I would never tell you, look at me. <laughs> but I will tell you that that's what he was doing. He, he, was, he was trying to example in object lessons how to love and serve God. Let me say that again. He was trying to encourage through object lessons, how to serve God, at least with his life. So as you experience things in your life, don't hide things. I mean, there are things you cannot all share everything. Let's just say that. We all know that. Um, but there may be a private one-on-one -on -one sharing where God is leading you to share that testimony with someone else um, or share that struggle with a, a extremely confident Christian prayer partner, um, or a spouse and, you know, as a prayer partner. Um, but I will tell you that there is joy in that journey because as you share your story, you share your testimony, however you want to see it. Um, God can use that because if we give him all glory, then it's his, right? It's not our story. It's his story. I just looked up on our TV has these like screensaver things and um, it is pink and yellow tulips. If you don't know, both our daughters that we lost, pink is representative of them and the, and the sunlight that's hitting them has white edges. 
So pink is representative of them, of my oldest uh, daughter we lost. And yellow is our youngest daughter that we lost. And, um, and then the white was my grandmother's color that I gave her when I do flowers. My parents get purple, obviously. But I looked up and I saw that and I thought, thank you, God, because I am sharing. I'm sharing things that are incredibly hard. If I think too long on it, if I dwell on it, um, yeah, it can go to a bad place. And, you know, and that I'm just grievous over it, the loss. Or I can count it all joy and trust God. Thank him for this season, these things that I went through in my life. And know that how many times he's used it, even with people that didn't know we had lost two little girls. Um, what an amazing God we serve. What an amazing God we serve. So, if you don't have an Amplified, I highly encourage you. If you don't have an Amplified Study Bible, I highly encourage you. If you don't have multiple translations in the Bible, get the free app, Bible Gateway, Blue Letter Bible. Highly encourage you. And, um, and or have parallel Bibles, get other Bibles. Um, you can have one for like art journaling. You can have one for um, like I have one for note taking journaling. I have one for art type journaling. Um, and then I have this one for study that I, t I don't know why I don't take notes in this that much. I, I just don't. I, I, that's when I pull out my other journaling Bible. Um, I don't know why. Maybe at some point I will, but I don't in this one. I just, it's almost like a reference Bible for me is how I see it. So anyways, I, I have stickies, but I don't have, yeah. Okay. Let's pray. I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you guys have been encouraged today. Again, that's my goal. And um, if there's something that I said and you're like, that's not, no, nah, put it away. Don't, you obey God. God is numero uno in the obedience of what is being spoken in your life. And um, whatever anyone says, you hold it up to God's word. Whatever anyone says, you hold it up to God's word and not just a verse. You got to read the chapter, read the book in which you're holding that up to. Um, you have to really understand what the original intent is. And, and I just can't. Tree of Life is a great Bible for that. That's word for word translation. Um, it's a great Bible to own. Um, I have one. So I um, have it on my phone as well. So take it back to the original, um, you know, the original Greek and Hebrew and just trust God. Let him show you. All right. Let's pray. I'll let you go. Um, dear Lord, we praise you. We thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for teaching us whatever was said today. Let it bring all glory to you. Let it be encouraging to everyone and help them to know you as Savior in a personal relationship with you, a day-to-day -day walking together, walking and talking. Lord, as I have so much to do today, um, I pray that you will show me your will. Um, I am so grateful for all that you're teaching me right now. I mean every last drop. Am I grateful? God, what is it that we're to do? What is it that we're to be? What is it that we're to say? What is it that we're to learn? What is it that we're to read? What is it that we're to, su to support and encourage others? Show us all of this. What is it to be pleasing to you? What is it to be obedient to you? What is it to grow our faith in you? And that's what we're doing, God. That's what we're doing. And thank you for this devotional, but even more, thank you for your word. Thank you so much, God. We love you. We praise you. We bow down before you. We are so humbled by your presence, God. Lord, I ask you to be with each and every person here today. I pray, I pray that they will, they will be seeking you, Lord, in all areas of their lives. In their reading time in the word, their prayer time, their walking along the path praying time, their interaction with others time. They're reading um, outside um, devotionals, Bible studies that will help them draw them back to you, to your word. Lord, we pray, God, right now that your will be done. Your will be done in all these different areas of their lives. Uh, my life, God, your will be done. Not my will, not their will, but your will. Lord, we love you, God. We love you, love you, love you. You're an awesome awesome God. It also fits nothing in this world but you. That word is so exclusively you. 
Oh, Lord, thank you for that teaching so many years ago, and I couldn't agree more. Lord, we love you. We praise you. Lord, please be with each one of my dear, sweet friends right now. Please bless their lives. Please encourage them and make yourself known to them. If they're in a, in a lost state, God, reveal yourself, your will, your way to them, Lord. Unequivocally, that they can look at it and go, yeah, it took three days, but I finally got it. It's okay. Lord, give them peace that when they hear your voice, they're starting to listen to your voice more and more. And even in the little things, even in the little things, God. Lord, we love you. Thank you so much. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Okay, I'm going to post this today, which is Wednesday. I'm going to post the Bible journaling today, which is Wednesday. I'm making it for Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday, we'll have Thanks, Thankful Thursday. I'm excited about that one. And Friday is Frugal Friday, and I'm excited about that. Remember, Saturday, I will have a post that relates to this Bible study and to our Bible drilling camp. So you're not going to miss this because it's I'm excited. I'm really excited. So I'm still tired, but I'm excited. <laughs> All right, guys, I love you. As much as I love you, Jesus loves you so, so much more. Keep serving him well. I pray your day is blessed, creative, and lovely. And I will be talking to you very soon, my friends. I'll be back with the next video. Bye now. Love you.